a New York All-Star Weekend and I was at a club and I think Khloe Kardashian was there and he was standing in the corner the whole time he was just staring at her like this this looked foolish What's up cookies? Welcome back and if you're new here, hello. Nice to meet you. My name is Carolyn Gray. This is my channel. I talk about all things in and around fashion and sometimes I take you along for the journey that is my life living in New York City as an entrepreneur and content creator. Welcome. If you subscribe and if you like this video, you are now a part of the cookie community. This is a family, we're chaotic, and we like to get dressed. <laughs> now today, we have a lot of things to discuss. Um, let me get my glasses, actually. First on the agenda for today's fashion news key key is Phoebe Philo. I mean, I know it's been a little bit over a week, I guess, right, since she's debuted her new namesake brand with her own website and all things because we've known Phoebe Philo for her time at Chloe, but more for her time at Celine. That was in a an iconic situation and a lot of brands and designers are thoroughly inspired by the designer that Phoebe is. Now, we didn't know what to expect with this. Everything was on very close lip situations around the world. We knew nothing. All we knew was that October 30th was gonna be the day that she dropped her hot shit. And let me tell you, here's my take on it. She debuted her collection and it really is reminiscent of most of the iconic designs that she is mostly known for. Um, she threw in a bit of new, a little bit of edge, and a little bit of a preview of what's to come. So I do feel kind of excited to see what's to come. What has already been dropped, it's like, okay, we knew that you were capable. I see you, Phoebe Philo. I see them prices too, because baby, those are very high. Now we have things that range from 450 all the way to 1200 or by appointment only pricing. So, and there's a lot of like talk going around about whether or not people are a true fan of hers. If they don't understand their pricing, then they're not a big fan. They're not a true fan. And I just think that's mean girl shit that's flying around. At the end of the day, we knew nothing about this brand as far as pricing, what to expect. So maybe some of her biggest fans were not actually financially prepared. I know I'm not. $8,500 for a bag, BB. $8,500, baby. So, and the other thing that I have questions about is, you know, she is primarily an independent brand, but she is backed a little bit. There's a minority, a nor minority amount backed by LVMH, who owns several other brands, right, that we know about. And those other luxury brands have had quite a few price increases throughout the last couple of years. Is this going to be something that she will partake in? Who knows? But if you're starting at eight to five hundred for a bag, baby, then you think you are mass. You think you are a mass. All right, listen, listen. If you believe in you, that's all you need. And it's apparent to me that Phoebe believes in herself because in prices are reflective. And she knows that she that she's that it girl. That is a fact. Now, am I wowed by all the designs that came out? No. But I would if they were at a certain price point or if they showed up at Zara like design i will definitely partake in those shenanigans okay but i am i, I want to see what's to come what's going to happen with the other drops i found that her imagery was i always loved her imagery for celine when she was um designing for them and now her own namesake i truly love the aesthetics of the campaigns that she's done I even think Brian Boy, a, an influencer, pointed out that when he zoomed into one of the frames of the models um, that she was wearing, you can see Phoebe holding an iPhone with one other person in the room taking photos. And these are the photos that are now the images that show up on the website, not even on Instagram. They still have posted nothing on Instagram. So the only way that I actually found out I had signed up for an email notification for when the brand was ready and their website was ready months ago when they first put it up. So I do suggest signing up for their subscription so you know when things are available because those items sold within minutes, within hours, depending on the price. And I know for a fact there's a pair of shoes that I saw on one of those image 
those those little boxes of images there's a pair of shoes that i saw and the shoes are more so in my price range than anything else so i will be partaking in that accessory now moving on moving on um let me just make sure i covered all the things about phoebe Either way, I'm excited to see what else is there. I don't like the mean girl shenanigans that people are talking about. Well, if you can't afford it and you're not a real, you're not a real customer, you're not a real consumer of the Phoebe Fiber, you're not a cult follower. First of all, <laughs> it's a recession, girl. Shut the fuck up. Second, thirdly, um, I wasn't wowed, but I understand the foundation of the designs. Okay, moving on to the next topic. Now, I know a lot of y'all can't stay in this family. But I have to say, this family gets to the bag, they get to the coin, they say we're gonna build this legacy and we don't give it we don't give a damn what you think about us. And I'm sometimes I'm torn, okay? The Kardashians, Kim specifically, has recently debuted two different collaborations that are groundbreaking to me. To me, because first of all, so Kim had put out there in the world on the same day that Phoebe Philo debuted her collection. Funny. Funnily enough, October 30th, Skims is now the official underwear partner of the NBA, the WNBA, and the USAB. I don't even know what the USAB is, but it got something to do with basketball, huh? I think it got something to do with basketball. Now, the fact is, they're designing for maximum comfort, movement, and support. Skims underwear wins across the board. And I got to tell you, let me tell you something. I know a few of my cookies are not, they do, they do not like that family and anything that they support. But I will tell you this, Skims, the product, the quality, the longevity of it, it's there. She, it's there. And I know that Kanye had a hand in helping the foundation of that brand and he needs to get more accolades. And who knows, maybe behind the scenes, he actually does get the coins from whatever he put into it. But she gets to the bag every single time that is phenomenal them basketball players gonna be running up and down that court farting and, do and sweating and doing all the things in the, in the manties and panties and kim is the foundation of it all not only did she do a collaboration with nba well wnba and usab i gotta figure out what that is she also has collaborated with swarovski crystals the Swarovski brand. I don't even know if I'm saying it right. I've always felt like I'm not saying Swarovski correctly, but I'm gonna say how I feel. She, listen, so they collaborated and their designs, honestly, for Swarovski, like jewelry, beautiful pieces. Her collaborating with the creative designer, creative director of Swarovski, you can see that there's a great balance. Now, I wasn't really expecting a whole shebang with the Skims part of this collection. Skims is a basics brand and they just crystallized the shit out of their basics. That, that's what it was. That's a, I bought a pair of leggings because that's I was attracted to just the leggings. I like the bodysuit. I like the long dress. I like the maxi skirt. I love the maxi skirt design because they actually added a zipper in the back so you can move around the country freely, right? But um, I think it hit all the marks for what it is. They have beautiful jewelry pieces, body pieces, chokers, all the things. It looks gorgeous. And even so, no shade. When they first put out the images that they were doing a collaboration, Kim doing the collaboration with Skims and um, Swarovski Crystal, I thought it was Beyonce. I was like, B, is that you? The girls are always influenced by B. But either way, I think it was a smart collaboration. It looks good. It looks very tasteful, well-balanced. Mostly everything is sold out and waitlisted. Um... They did a good job. And it's also at Bergdorf Goodman. If you feel like you're in New York City and you didn't get your size online, check out the store. They might have it in stock there. And even a few days before they did the debut, I saw a metallic Skims and Swarovski Crystal Taxi run around about town. And they have like a, a pop-up over there. So I, I hope I can get to it before the end of the week because... I'm nosy, I wanna see. And I might actually buy the bodysuit if it's still available at the, at the, at the pop-up or at Bergdorf, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm still thinking about that bodysuit. I'm a little upset that I let it sell out before I got my size, because it was there when I was looking. I mean, I don't know why I didn't just do things. Now, the other thing, this is new to me. 
This is new to me, but it's not new. It happened, I think, in 2021. Diesel did a whole marketing campaign where they said, wear our clothes and bring them back and we'll give you a full refund. Have a full ride in our clothes. Stank it up to be damned and bring it up. Bring it back. We'll take, we'll take it. We'll give you your money back. Do what you need to do. And the funny thing is, is that sales have increased and returns have decreased. So this is new to me because I actually saw um, an Instagram page, a fashion business Instagram page, um, bring this conversation up. And I'm like, I didn't know that shit. Now, I know I said that Diesel is very all over the place as far as their, their designs. They have something for everyone, and I think that's cool. But I also feel like some of their stuff is a little ridiculous, like that leather belt that is a skirt. Like, they have it as a skirt, but it's a belt. Barely. I don't know actually what it is. It's body armor to protect the top of the vagina. I don't know. I don't know. Either way, um, I'm not a big fan of the brand, but I was like, that's really interesting that they did a huge marketing campaign to support their customers buying and wearing their clothes and getting a full refund. And it actually doing reverse psychology on the consumer because think about it. You get to wear the clothes and then you realize how good you look in them. People are giving you compliments left, right, front and center. And then you're like, you know what? I was going to take this back, but I actually really like it because I lived in it. They said, live in the clothes, girl. You're gonna, you're gonna realize that you actually love wearing our stuff. You're gonna love. <laughs> you're not gonna wanna bring it back, but we'll, we'll let you bring it back if you really want to. If you must, you know, you can. So, another thing. The CFDA has announced their winners for the awards that they give every year, child. They give a women's designer, men's designer, accessories designer, Google up and coming, all the things, right? And let let me tell you something. I am very happy. I am very happy for Rachel Lee. Hold on, let me put up. I'm very happy about Rachel Lee Scott of Diotima winning the Shop with Google American Emerging Designer of the Year. Thoroughly, thoroughly deserved. Love Rachel, sweetest soul. Sweetest soul. I met her during New York Fashion Week. She explained to me exactly how everything comes to fruition with her brand. Her mother even works for her and makes sure that the production that takes place in her hometown, Jamaica, is done without a, a, a what is it, a kink, a stitch, a, a monkey wrench in the, in the show. I don't know. You know what I'm talking about. She makes sure that the things go as planned and that people are paid and that the women artisans that they use in Jamaica are, are feeling great and inspired and they're thoroughly involved in the brand. And then she, she just, the quality of her product, the design that goes into it, the thought process that goes into it, the spirit that goes into it, she's well deserving of that. And there were several other people that were up on the uh, the nomination for that. Now, I did see something, and here's the thing, Luar. I hope I hope Luar gets nominated again because he didn't take anything home this year. But it's great that he was nominated for two different awards: accessories and for women's um, design. When it comes to the women's accessories winner, right? I don't know if Brandon Blackwood posted this out of shade. Or if he was really like trying to just be supportive because the post went down. So yesterday morning when I had risen from my slumber, I happened to scroll on Instagram as we all do and really shouldn't because why would we start our day with a digital platform that sometimes makes us feel slow. Anyway, I saw that he posted, <clears throat> congratulations to Mary Kay and Ashley Olsen for winning Women's Accessories Designer of the Year, the CFDA award. And the next slide, was one of their tote bags that is a very basic tote bag. And then the post is gone. Truth be told, it looked like he had the time of his life. He got dressed down to the nines, baby. He went to the award show. He represented for himself. And unfortunately, he did not win. And also, the tote bag that he posted is kind of reminiscent of one of his large tote bags that he offers as well. At the end of the day, here's my thought on it. Brandon is an exquisite handbag designer. He does not get enough flowers as it is. He busts his ass. His marketing campaigns are top notch. He does what needs to be done. Mary Kay and Ashley Olsen are very quiet luxury, basic, elevated, quality is there, and the money, the prices be pricing, baby, okay? But they have won awards before. 
And the other thing too, they're, the quality of the bags aren't up there with like other brands that Leathers and Notoriety is there for the design, the quality, like Coach, Bottega. Like if you really wanna know, <clears throat> if you're spending your coin on something that's worth it, those are the brands that come to mind when it comes to leather handbags, accessories. It's brands like that. And then brands like Brandon, who put out so many different types of designs and, and, and the quality and just the customer service. It's just there's more that goes into the design and he meets all of those. As well as Luar, because Luar didn't win it either. But I found it very interesting that Brandon posted that and then several moments later it was gone. Because his PR said... Um, don't we we don't know what that's going to look like to everybody because it might look like we're a sore loser and we don't want that so it was there it was there i seen it but now it's gone anyway the next thing on my agenda and the last thing that i want to cover is the basketball tunnel fashion now we talked about the nba and their mantis and their panties being covered by skims let's talk about the fashions because back in the day we didn't really have much of this right we had dennis rodman and truth be told, Dennis Rodman, I loved him because of his fashions. I said, that man got on earrings and his nails are, are painted. What is he? He got on lace today. I freaking love Dennis Rodman. Since I was a child, I always liked Dennis Rodman. He was a good player, but he was also a fantabulous dresser. He had me on my toes every time, okay? But now, the, ba the babies, they're, they're walking to the game and arriving to the arena and they're serving the girls with the looks. They got their stylists, they're pulling the looks together and I thought maybe it'll be fun to go through with some, some of the most recent looks, okay? Now there's a whole Instagram dedicated to this and I'll share it on in the description below. Anything that I'm talking about today, I'll share the information below. This young man, Kuz, he's my favorite. He comes to these tunnels and it is a very, it's giving Fuck you. <laughs> Style. Really and truly. You know what I'm saying? He don't give a damn. Look at this. He is wearing a shimmery, shaggy fit with a full on Birkin. It, he's my favorite. I'm, I'm just going to say, I'm going to tell y'all right now. He is my absolute favorite out of all of them. He is the new Dennis Rodman. I don't know who this little boy is, but he look cute too. I love his pants. It's very like, it's given effortless. And it's giving my espresso cup is also a part of my outfit. Like he gets it. He gets it and he's wearing the 70s Chuck Taylors and not the regular Chuck Taylors that make your feet look doofy. It, it just crosses every. And is, is, that, is that a Van Cleef? I don't know. I don't know. Even the jewelry. They're, they're serving in, even in the jewelry department. Now Drew Holiday don't know this boy either. But listen. I mean young man. It's giving preppy Wembley. Listen. He looks good. He looks spiffy. He looks comfortable. And the pant length doesn't look like high water. It looks like this is on purpose. It's cropped because I'm fashionable. D, I don't know his real book. D Brooks, something Brooks. I think he plays for the Nets. This is giving quiet luxury. It's giving comfort. It's giving probably Louis Vuitton or Bottega, something. Lambon. I don't know what he's wearing, but he's wearing it. It's not wearing him. And I appreciate that. And he's wearing a book. He may not be even reading that book, but it's a part of the accessory. And I live for that. Their, their little touches are amazing. Now, CP3, he has a very specific quality about, like, all of his looks. And he knows exactly what he likes. And I love his duffel bags. I mean, this Loewe with this full camel ensemble with the pop of lime green on top. It's, it's giving. I'm proud. Like, they're getting dressed. Now, this, I don't, he look uncomfortable. He looks very uncomfortable. Like I like, I like his Goyard laptop bag, but the jacket is given uncomfortable and short sleeved, slight, slight short sleeved. Moving right along, um, this baby look lost. I like his sneakers, but he look lost. Maybe he doesn't have a stylist yet. There's potential. Now you know what? You know what? The king and queen of the NBA. The J and B of the NBA, they're always serving looks. This isn't one of my favorite looks, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't like, I don't like, I don't like none of this. They they have done better. I'll find another look with uh, LeBron James. Now, you know what's crazy? I'm always thinking about when I'm looking at these looks, I'm like, wow, they're so tall. Like there's there's not enough fabric on the regular clothing that we will find in these designer boutiques, right? Because it's still, you know, it's 
it's a generalized sizing system when it comes to some of these brands, right? Still. So this tall drink of water, they found enough fabric for him. And I'm just happy for him. Now, he looked tired. He don't look that happy. But I think he looks nice. I think they found enough fabric. It all flows very nicely. Mm -hmm. Here's an outfit that I like for LeBron. He's wearing the Louis Vuitton by Pharrell. And I'm feeling that. Is that the million dollar bag? No, that's not. That's not. It's not the million dollar bag, but it's 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 one that Pharrell designed. He's wearing the sneakers, the safari jacket, the jewelry. Child boo. He didn't come to play. And I like his, his sunglasses because they're not something that you would typically see. Again, CP3. Bottega bag. It, that's his name, right? I don't know a lot of their names. I think that's CP3. I don't know his real name. Um, James Harden. I know that one because I don't really like his energy. As I remember seeing him at um, a New York All-Star weekend and I was at a club and I think Khloe Kardashian was there and he was standing in the corner the whole time. He was just staring at her like I don't know if they ever make contact or converse that night, but he gave me the heebie-jeebies, you know what I'm saying? But his outfit looks cozy, cute. Um, I love the fact that he's wearing Rick Owens. Um, jewelry is popping for him and his standards. I don't like that. I don't like his jewelry, but I get it, whatever. But the pants look super cozy. It's giving I'm cozy on the sideline, and I'm a weirdo. Again, coos. I, I mean, I cannot get enough. And I love his tattoos. Everything just flows for me here. Even the waves in his hair. You better go, boy. You better you better work. You better work that tunnel runway, honey. And then Russell Westbrook. Let me tell y'all. He's actually an original. He's he's an OG. He's been doing these fashion walks for the, the longest. He's been serving the looks. And this comfort 90s throwback cool, it's everything to me. It's giving poetic justice. This is a poetically made outfit. I mean, he knows what he's doing. I'm mad that he doesn't really showcase his fashions more on his social media, but I get it. This young man needs a stylist. Now this is what we're used to seeing. This, this look foolish. Like you really just, from head to toe, I don't like it. Get a stylist. And then this young man, he did a couple of looks. He served some looks in Paris during Fashion Week too. I love the fact that he's wearing this Birkin with these pinstripe pants that are more than long enough for him. I really love that. And the mesh shirt. I don't even know his name. I think he work, he, he plays works for the Raptors. Still, I don't know any, but Whitney, my friend Whitney actually styles him. And the fact that he's wearing his Birkin, I just can't get over the Birkin. That's, that's what I just can't get over. So all in all, those are my fashion hot take news key key things that I wanted to share with y'all. I hope y'all like this video. Comment below. Tell me y'all thoughts on everything that I covered. Do you like this format of video? If you do, don't you forget to like this video. Don't you forget to subscribe. And don't forget to put on notifications because apparently 50% of y'all actually are subscribed and watching. And then the other 50% are like new people who I guess search my name, but also just put a notification on there. So it doesn't mess. And then it also tells you that YouTube likes, like it tells YouTube that you like me, that we're friends. I think we're friends. It would be sad if you didn't, then I, it would be very one-sided in this relationship that I'll feel very taken advantage of. I would feel sad and left behind. I don't think he would want me to feel that way. I put a lot of energy and heart and soul into this and a lot of research. As much as I could, as much as my, my brain could fit. I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> my brain can't fit that much right now, okay, y'all? But anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I'll see y'all in the next one. I'll see y'all later. Cookies. Bye.